In part two of this presentation, I want to finish off the evaluation of the integral that we started in part one. It was the integral shown here, remember? We eventually turned it into a function of z integrated around the unit circle. It looked like this. If you don't have a clear memory of that, we can go back and look at the, f the original work. There was the f of z, 1 over z squared plus 4z plus 1. And you might remember the bit of work we did involving changing cos theta to a half z plus 1 over z and so on, and with z equals e to the j theta. Okay, if you're not very clear about all that, then go back and look at that presentation again. I want to progress quite quickly now. Here were the roots for f of z, the places where that denominator is zero. Negative two plus or minus the root of three. And we decided that one of them was inside the circular contour, the root negative two plus root three. Let's record some of that in our new place. So f of z has poles at z equals negative 2 plus or minus root 3. We could write f of z as 1 over and then factorize the quadratic z minus negative 2 plus root 3 multiplied by z minus negative 2 minus root 3. Those two factors are both linear. They appear only to power 1 and not squared or cubed. That means they are simple poles. We're only interested in the simple pole at minus 2 minus root 3. No, I said that wrong. Minus 2 plus root 3. That's the one that's inside the contour. It's inside mod z equals 1. We need to find the residue for f of z at that pole. We want the residue of f at the position z equals negative 2 plus root 3. We have a definition for the residue for a simple pole. It is simply the limit as z approaches the dangerous value. And then we make a quotient with z minus the dangerous value on top. And all the rest of the function is f of z. So that's z minus minus 2 plus root 3 and z minus minus 2 minus root 3. Can you see that the top cancels with one of the factors on the bottom? That leaves us with the limb as z approaches minus 2 plus root 3 of 1 over z minus minus 2 minus root 3. The cancellation has got rid of the dangerous term underneath and we can now substitute the value of z and evaluate the limit. It's just 1 over negative 2 plus root 3 subtract negative 2 minus root 3. The negative 2's cancel and the root 3's add up. So that makes 1 over 2 root 3. OK, so now the Cauchy residue theorem says that the integral around the contour, in this case it was mod z equals 1, of f of z dz is 2 pi j 
times the sum of the residues of all the poles that are inside. But there was only one pole inside and we've just found the residue. It's 1 over 2 root 3. The 2's cancel so that simplifies to j pi over root 3. We're nearly there. Let's go back and remind ourselves about the extra factors that need to be in this integral. Way back to the start again. Now f of z was 1 over the quadratic, but let's not forget there was this factor of negative 2j outside. That came when we multiplied the, by 2 over 2 here, and the negative j, remember, was just the same as 1 over j. So putting everything together, we've got to multiply this answer by negative 2j. So finally our integral, it's not a contour integral anymore, the original integral from 0 to 2 pi, 1 over 2 plus cos theta d theta is negative 2j times the answer just above, j pi over root 3, that was 2 pi j times the residue and here the j times negative j simplifies to 1 and we end up with 2 pi over root 3. We've successfully evaluated the integral. I'm going to stop here but there will be some further parts where we deal with other integrals. One with sine theta and another one where we meet problems with the integrand blowing up. But I think this will do for now.